Dear brothers and sisters, today I would like to speak to you a very important aspect of Christian theology. So, especially something which many people ask this question, because especially during the Lenten season, we do talk about suffering. For example, um, we need to do fasting, penances, absence, abstinence. Uh, uh, you know, not taking certain food items and kneeling down, going, doing the stations of the cross, take pain, pain and penance in your body. So, you know, it's like uh, in the Catholic Church, it's like promoting voluntary sufferings. And I remember sometime back, one Protestant pastor who, who was one of my friends, he said, Father, you people are having a wrong belief, wrong teaching. I said, what do you mean? And then he said, um, if G Jesus suffered for us, then why should we suffer? Jesus suffered for us so that through all the sufferings he eradicated on the cross, for all the suffering we are supposed to go through, Jesus went through the suffering, and why should we suffer? For our sins, Jesus paid the price, then why should we pay the price? He went through all the extreme torture, extreme pain. Then why should you go for fasting, penance and these and that? You know, flogging, torching. There are some saints who used to flog themselves. Saint John Paul used to flog himself. So there are so many who do this. But this pastor could not believe this. He says, his belief is this. Jesus paid the price. Jesus suffered for us. Then why should we suffer? So today, I would like to speak to you about this. What does the Bible say? For example, penances and sacrifices, abstinence and almsgiving, which Jesus told us to do. Is it against biblical? No. It is. Jesus did it. And Jesus wants his disciples to do it. Penances like fasting, abstinence, almsgiving, even avoiding sleep sacrificing your sleep and praying even at night like night vigil these are all something which jesus started and his disciples continued for example in today's gospel we just heard gospel of matthew chapter 9 verse 15 gospel of matthew chapter 9 verse 15 we read when once jesus is gone to the heaven assumption after the assumption jesus said when bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast yes my disciples will fast. So fasting is not an option, but is the compulsory. We should fast and we will fast. God knows it. Jesus knows it. That is why even in um, Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, I think verse 6, can you read? We read like this, uh, Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 onwards we read, But whenever you pray, go into your, you know, whenever you pray, prayer is a must. And also we read, let's read verse uh, 1 onwards. Okay, well, 16 onwards, chapter 6, verse 16, we read like this. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal. So what does it mean? Did Jesus did not say if you fast. No. Jesus said whenever you fast. Whenever you fast. Do that. Like this. So that is a compulsory thing. Fasting is a compulsory thing as per Jesus. But today we are going to reflect why we should suffer. Why we should go through all this suffering. Why should we take voluntary suffering on ourselves? Why should we go do penances and sacrifices, fasting, and sometimes giving up uh, and lead a poverty life? Some people go to the wilderness and lead a hermit life, monk's life. Why do we need to do it? God suffered for us. Jesus suffered for us. He saved us. Now it is time for us to enjoy. Some people say this. 
but why the catholic church promotes these kinds of suffering why the church says we have to accept suffering we have to go through suffering we have to voluntarily take up suffering why do we need to say that why this first word of god we need to read is uh, letter to colossians chapter 1 verse 24 letter to colossians chapter 1 verse 24 saint paul says i am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is church. Now remember, St. Paul says, I am suffering in my body. Because he was voluntarily taking some suffering. St. Paul and the disciples, they used to do fasting and penances. All the early Christians used to do fasting, penances, sacrifices. And now St. Paul gives an explanation, sorry, explanation for this. Why does he give, go through this suffering? He says, I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Now there is a big question. Jesus' suffering, is it not complete? Is there anything lacking in Christ's afflictions? Is there any imperfection in his suffering? No. Jesus suffered perfectly. But this perfect suffering, this perfect sacrifice that gave us salvation but we are not able to accept it because something lacking in us now saint paul says something is blocking you from receiving the perfect sacrifice of jesus in your life therefore i am trying my best through my suffering and trying my best to remove this block from you from the church i'll give you an explanation so that we may understand it in a proper sense there is a very powerful bible passage in the old testament that is from the book of exodus chapter 17 verse 8 onwards book of exodus chapter 17 verse 8 onwards it's a very powerful story listen very carefully and then you will understand the meaning of the meaning of suffering so this is very important for all the christian faith Listen very carefully, you will understand it. Then Amalek, Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rafidim. You know, when Israel had saved from Egypt, they were on the promise, the way to the promised land. The first to group to come and attack the Israelites are Amalekites. Who are the Amalekites? The Amalekites are the descendants of Esau. There is is Jacob, Jacob, Israel is the descendants of Jacob. Amalekites are descendants of Esau. Jacob and Esau, the twin brothers. So Amalekites are the permanent enemy of Israel. Amalekites were considered as the cruel people. And they were considered as somebody who is the worst among all the enemies of Israel. And they were cruel because when Israelites go to the promised land, normally the Ark of the Covenant carried by the priest go in the front and then the elders and the Levites and then so many people go in row, in line. The women and the weak people, sick people, old people, those are carrying heavy burdens, they used to come at the back, at the last in the row, they used to be in the last. And the Amalekites, they used to come and attack the Israelites, not from the front, but from the back, and kill and destroy and affect, and, uh, you know, abuse the women, children, destroy them, kill them, and take all the possessions. They used to do like this. They were terrible people. We read like this in the word of God about the Amalekites who attacked Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 17. Remember what Amalek did to you on your journey out of Egypt? Continue. Remember what Amalek did to you on your journey out of Egypt? Verse 18. How he attacked you on the way. When you were faint, when you are weak, tired of journey and weary. 
They were waiting for you to be tired in your journey and struck down all who lagged behind you. Those who are behind you used to be attacked by the Amalekites. You know, in the Bible, Amalek is a symbol of the devil, Satan, evil one. It's kind of personified evil spirit. So that is why God says, remove Amalekites from your community, from your, from your life. What does it mean? It's a symbol of evil one, personified evil. And they used to wait for you. They wait, they hide behind when the Israelites pass. They hide and see when they are weak, when they are faint, when they are tired, they will come. For example, when Jesus was 40 days of fasting, he was famished and then the devil came to tempt him. So when you are weak, physically, emotionally, spiritually, that is when the devil comes with the same temptations in your mind. Suddenly some unexpected tragedy happened. Then suddenly some questions will come to your mind. Where is God? You prayed so much and why this happened? You are used to go to church daily. Why this suffering? So that's how the devil works. When you're weak, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, that is when the devil comes inside and attacks you. And he also, the other day I was uh, uh, explaining to you, he also wait for the weak chain. Weak, in a chain, the weak link. He attacks the weak link. The Amalekites, they waited, they hides, they attacked the women and children who are considered weak and they were tired, they were behind. They attacked. That is why those who are strong, it is our duty to help the weak. Otherwise, at the end, we will be alone to fight this battle. So, the, they, this is what the word of God says. And also we read like this, Genesis Okay, uh, let's continue reading Exodus chapter 17 verse 8. Exodus chapter 17 verse 8. Then Amalek, so they were the first one to attack Israelites. The first one to attack, they came against Israel. And then what did Moses do? Moses knew he is a very powerful warrior. You know that in the Bible, you know, when there was two people fighting with each other, Moses intervened and attacked one and killed him and saved the other one. There are two uh, people, one Egyptian and Israelis, and he killed the Egyptian and saved the Israelites. And later when two Israelites were fighting, he tried to go and then uh, console them, but they revealed his secret that he killed a person. That means Moses was so powerful and he, he was brought up in the palace as the son of Pharaoh. Therefore, he was given all the training of a warrior, a soldier. He was powerful. But he knew in this battle, in this battle, it is not the sword or it is not the power or the strength of me or anybody which is going to help, me, help the Israelites. But it is not the power of health or body, but it is the power of prayer. Therefore, Moses said, the warrior of warriors, he said, Joshua, you lead the battle. I will go to the mountain so that you can see me and I can see you fighting. You fight, I will support you with prayer. We read verse 9. We read verse 9. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some men for us and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. You know why this staff? The staff that he had, with the, this is the staff with which he divided the Red Sea into two. With, this is the staff with which he hit on the rock and the water came out. So this staff, he is the is a sign of the miracle working God's presence. So the staff means he has some, some faith inside. The staff is also a symbol of his own faith. And he said, I will hold on to my faith. Taking the road, taking the staff means I will hold on to my faith. The faith in my living God. And he said, I will stand on the top of the hill 
with the staff of god in my hand praise the lord praise the lord a hallelujah and told joshua you fight and then who are these people who went to the mountain moses and aaron aaron is his brother the third one who who is his brother in law it said it's brother in law and br brother and brother in law the hur and aaron the priest they went to the mountain to the hill and we read continue verse 10 so joshua did as moses told him and fought with amalek while moses aaron and hur went up to the top of the hill and what did they do on that hill they were praying for the battle that is taking place remember this is also a prefiguration of getsemani prefiguration of getsemani what happened in getsemani in getsemani jesus took three people along with him peter john and james keeping them at distance and said pray stay awake and pray for me and then he went little far away and there was a battle with the amalek the evil one in this battle jesus was sweating blood but there was no support but still only with this his own power and his own prayer life he could defeat the devil and said let your will be done not my will and came out of getsemani my dear brothers and sisters this example which we read from amalekites and moses and ur and aaron it has got so many meanings why this is given so much of importance we are going to read it verse 11 whenever moses held up his hand israel prevailed and whenever he lowered his hand amalek prevailed whenever moses held up his hand like this israel the battle in the you know you know they are on the hill on the hill they are standing on the hill and on the hill moses is standing like this and on the on the valley the army the enemies are attacking the um, israelites israelites are fighting against the amalekites and on the top of the hill moses is lying praying like this everybody can see joshua when he looks up to the hill he can see moses praying like this when moses looks down he can see the he can see the israelites are winning the war when his hands after tie after some time he got tired and his hands went down then he saw when then moses saw the israelites are getting defeated therefore what did he do he did not want to lower his hands he went down stretching out his hand after some time moses as a human being it was impossible for him to hold on to his hands like this and then iron and who came to know moses is weak he can't do it he can't be successful in keeping the hands like this then both of them supported moses they held their with their hands they held moses hands they made moses to sit on the rock and they supported from both hands they started joining with the pain of moses they started helping moses in his suffering now everybody listen very carefully there is a secret of the bible here what is the secret on the hill you can see moses stretching out his hands towards both sides and praying this is the free prefiguration of jesus on mount calvary moses is the prefiguration of jesus jesus is the second moses and moses on the hill stretched out the hands is the crucifixion is the prefiguration of the crucifixion of jesus jesus crucified on mount calvary so that the israelites will win the battle and defeat the devil so the devil's defeat is based on it is dependent on the crucifixion of jesus jesus knew if he doesn't die on mount calvary the israelites will be defeated humanity will be defeated 
all the human beings will be defeated therefore jesus was ready to hold the hands like this and die on mount calvary now what are our roles if anybody if you are joining in jesus if you are following jesus just like the followers of moses what did they, what did they do the hur and aaron they knew it is their duty to support the hands of moses they held the hands of jesus moses both from both sides every christian when you do sacrifices and penances when you do mortifications and when you accept suffering you are doing exactly what aaron and hur did this is our duty to hold on to the hands of jesus in this battle it's not that jesus will be failed or jesus will be weakened but it is because we love jesus and we are part of jesus and this is a battle not just one person it is the battle of the head and the body jesus is the head the body is the church we are in the battlefield when moses lifted the hands and when hur and aaron supported it in the valley they could see the israelites are winning the war now when jesus dies on the calvary and we the followers of jesus hold on to the hands of both hands of jesus and lift it up and in this battle you will see the miracles and wonders will take place every saint mother mary all the angels all the saints are doing the same duty my dear brothers and sisters as one community everyone is active in this battlefield why in europe and many other places in many christian countries now the church has become christianity has become weakened because no one is there to support no one is there to strengthen no one is there to take the suffering in their body which is uh, which is blocking the healing and the blessings for the human being just like saint paul said i am completing what is like lacking in christ's afflictions for your sake we read colossians chapter 1 verse 24 colossians chapter 1 verse 24 we read like this i am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh i am completing what is lacking in christ's afflictions for the sake of his body that is the church my dear brothers and sisters we need hur and aaron in this world we need people who are ready to take the sufferings and sacrifices we need people to come and wash the face of the suffering jesus we need simon of cyrene to come and carry the cross of jesus which is absence now absent now once upon a time we have so many religious nuns and monks who were ready to do sacrifices and penances in the monasteries and kneeling down for hours even at midnight kneeling down and praying for the salvation of humanity therefore those days and those years the church was very strong we had thousands of nuns who are in the con convents doing the same thing which veronica did wiping the face of jesus the the face which is covered by the blood and it is all the nuns who are doing this duty of wiping the face of jesus and consoling him in his suffering by taking care of the people of god my dear brothers and sisters now we are lacking the number of veronicas in this world everyone is busy running after the worldly pleasures we are lacking simon of cyrenes and therefore the church is getting weakened the the battle is getting defeated and this is where we need to look into praise the lord therefore by doing and voluntarily accepting the suffering voluntarily taking fasting penances for the salvation of others we are strengthening the crucifixion of our lord jesus which is perfect and complete but we are doing penances so that the perfect sacrifice will come into our body and take control of our body you know when a human being do penances there is intervention of god in the surrounding just imagine the israelites are fighting amalekites are fighting when moses hands is going up israelites are going like this attacking them when moses hands is coming down 
then suddenly Amalekites become strong and Israelis are going backward. What does it mean? When Moses lifts the hands, as if, as if some angels from heaven, the army of God is coming and supporting the Israelites, the Amalekites were de de you know, defeated. But when Moses' hand fa failed, then the army of God could not do anything. My dear brothers and sisters, it is very important when you do penances and suffering, when you do penances and fasting and some, some sacrifice, you are releasing the army of God against your enemies. Every time when you fast and pray, every time you kneel down and lift up your hands and pray, you are releasing an army of God against your enemy. You don't need to fight. There is an army, a hidden army which is fighting for you. That is why the church promotes this suffering, this voluntary suffering which we have to take. That is why you have seen many saints who are taking penances and fastings and, and penances by lifting up the hands and kneeling down, avoiding sleep at night and doing night vigil and pray because this is very powerful. Because as a result of it, you will be able to see the day change. A man who is kneeling down, the man who is lifting up the hands down, hands and praying, when he does it, there is power manifested around him. And when a woman, when a girl, when a man who kneels down and pray, there will be power of God manifested around you. That is why during this Lenten season, Please do some fasting and some penances and kneeling down, some sacrifices, some avoiding sleep. Please do it and do pray. You will see many blocks and bondages, many defeat that you are facing in your family will be removed and you will be successful. In your financial area, in your marital area, in your family relationship, you will become successful because the enemy, the, enemy, the Amalekites will not be successful against you. Praise the Lord. So this is the, my, the message of the Lord. We also read, there is another passage from the Bible. We read like this, Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf. So that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. Let me tell you, when Joshua and the army are fighting there on the battlefield, they are not getting tired, they are ready to fight. But when Moses is praying, he is tired. So let me tell, ask you one thing, which is the hard work? Which is more difficult? Fighting a battle is not difficult, but Praying is difficult. Why? Because that is the most powerful. It is not the fight that helped them to win the back battle. But it is the prayer of Moses that helped them to win the battle. That is why many a time prayer become very burden. Prayer become difficult. But if you go for any battle and exercise and go to the gym and do all the kinds of jumping, dancing, it won't be tiring for you. Even if it is tiring, you will do it because it is mentally also you are not getting exhausted. At least you get rejuvenated. But here in this case, the prayer, praying, doing the ministry of the Lord, doing intercession, doing praying for others, it's a battle, a real battle. More powerful battle than the physical battle with the sword and the spear. Therefore, that is why my dear brothers and sisters, our enemy is not the flesh and blood. Our real enemy is the spiritual powers. Therefore, more than any other battle, we should take this battle very seriously. The battle of the taking the holy rosary, doing the stations of the cross, fasting, and all the other penances, by doing so, you are bringing and releasing the army of God against your enemies, against your evil one. That is the only way you can win the battle. We read like this in the word of God. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, verse 1 onwards. 
we read like this in the third year of king cyrus of persia a word was revealed to daniel who was named belteshazzar the word was true and it concerned a great conflict he, he understood the word having received understanding in the vision continue verse 2 and what did daniel do he did a daniel fasting at that time i daniel had been mourning for 3 weeks 3 weeks he did a fasting almost 21 days what is the daniel fasting you know you must have heard about daniel fasting 3 weeks 21 days what is that continue reading verse 3 he had eaten no rich food no rich food no meat nor no wine so avoiding tasty delicious luxurious food no meat no wine only simple and not tasty food and had not anointed myself with any perfumes no perfumes of no such kinds of things but only just normal taking bath without any extra extra um, uh, uh, perfumes or any kind of things so this he, this is he continued for 21 days this is called daniel fasting if you are inspired to do it you are most welcome to do it as a result of the daniel fasting what happened to daniel we continue verse 4 on the 24th day of the first month as i was standing on the bank of the great river that is the tigris that was the last day of his uh, after the last day of his um, uh, fasting daniel fasting when he was standing on the bank of the great river what happened verse 5 verse 5 we read like this i looked up and saw a man clothed in linen with a belt of gold from ufas around his waist linen cloth is a cloth is a cloth for the priest normally priest wear and belt of gold from a fast so around his waist normally the dress of the priest and he saw a powerful man and what did he saw what else he saw verse 6 we read like this his body was like brile his face like lightning his eyes like flaming torches his arms and legs like like the gleam of burnished bronze and the sound of his uh, words like the roar of multitude multitude he was so powerful just like john watch saw in the vision in, in padmos island the same way daniel is having a vision of god's powerful angel of god we don't know who he is but maybe most probably angel of god but because we read it later that is he's an angel of god and now verse 7 verse 7 i daniel alone saw the vision the people who were with me did not see the vision why because only daniel did the fasting the others did not do the fasting so daniel alone saw the fast vision the people who were with me did not see the vision though a great trembling fell upon them and they fled and hid themselves they got frightened but they could not see the vision but he could see the vision because he did the fasting my dear brothers and sisters when you do fasting and prayer the heaven will reveal himself to you when you do fasting and prayer the heaven the enemies of you will be defeated the enemy who seems to be very powerful in front of you will be defeated take fasting and penances upon you during this lenten season take some pen and pain and fasting if anyone who is praying for so many years with maybe gift of child you are praying for maybe a job you are praying for maybe you want to get married and nothing is happening and your family is failing and maybe big financial big breakthrough that you are expecting try this now maybe a daniel fasting or maybe any other fasting take it during this london season and you will see the power of god be manifested around you the blocks will be removed and the amalekites will be defeated this is the promise of god tonight the lord is giving you right now my dear brothers and sisters that is why as i was talking to you you know when moses was lifting up the hands on mount on the top he was praying for the israelites as long as his hands are stretched out israelites were successful on mount calvary you see jesus christ stretched out your hands his hands and praying for you 
24 hours he is interceding for you in the heavenly presence he is sitting at the right side of the father sitting at the right side of the father means sitting and interceding permanently for you what does it means when you fail when you commit sin when you are defeated jesus is begging in front of the father father my children are failing there they are being defeated there father my children are committing sin you may be going to allow the punishment in their life but lord father give me their punishment upon me i am here stretching out my hands and taking all the suffering give me their punishment upon me and save my children this is exactly what jesus is doing for the last 2000 years and he will continue for thousands of years as long as all we all exist and my dear brothers and sisters if you really love jesus you will reduce the pain of jesus by taking some of his support by standing on both sides and support the hands of jesus and say jesus you don't suffer alone we are also ready to suffer with you and strengthen your hands and that is what the catholic church is doing even today through all the sufferings that we endure and some accept all the pain and penances that we do in every lenten season and all the monks and missionaries and visionaries who are doing through the penance and all the nuns and monks who are in the convents and monasteries doing penances and sacrifice so that jesus hands will be strong and we are taking his pain it is not because jesus will be weakened but because out of love for jesus we support voluntarily and take his pain and reduce his pain so that he will be consoled just like veronica did on the way of the cross just like cyrene simon of cyrene did it on the way of the cross let us do it my dear brothers and sisters jesus will be happy when jesus looks at you and you look at his face when you support his cross and when you face his wash his face won't you see a smile on his face that is enough for us that is the biggest consolation that we can receive that is the biggest blessing that we can receive a smile on the face of jesus in the extreme torture and pain and that is what our missionaries are doing that is what our religious nuns are doing in the orphanages and old age homes and all the holy all these holy places let us continue and strengthen them support them and encourage them